I want to talk about a story of an 18-year-old named Ethan Lindenberger. Ethan has parents with anti-vaccination beliefs, so he asked on Reddit where he can get a vaccine. Eventually, he was able to find one, and afterwards, he was able to testify to the U.S. Senate Committee and called out social media sites for allowing the spread of misinformation. Now, you heard the anti-vax talks time and time again, but I want to talk about misinformation. How was Ethan's mother able to be influenced by misinformation? Our process of delivering and receiving information in media is flawed and irresponsible. Even though we are in the information age, misinformation can still influence us. So how does misinformation function in our society? Well, information can be difficult to manage because it spreads so fast throughout the internet. Almost every curation of information is based on what you do on the internet and is algorithmic. Because of this, we are left to ourselves to decide what is the truth or not the truth, but unfortunately, there can be some complica complications. So how does misinformation manifest? Maybe someone really believes it to the point where they think they're helping the world, but fall prey to misinformation campaigns, often with nefarious political or financial motives. So I want to talk about generalizations first. And this can happen with the misinformer or the recipient of the information. Let's consider the misinformer perspective and talk about irresponsible publications. So in order for the viewer to understand that piece of information so they can spread it, the publication will generalize or clickbait them just so they can spread the information. And this is a malicious intent by the publication. This is not isolated to just the um, the publication either. It can also happen with the recipient. Now, whether the article is uh, faultily generalized or not by the publication, the recipient can interpret the information incorrectly by generalizing the information. And with that, I want to connect this to something you may have heard that is called Facebook parenting. It's essentially where parents go on Facebook to get all their news, basically only reading the headline. And by only reading the headline, the get, they get the wrong picture. They don't have an informed decision because they don't know about the whole issue. And for the publication, this allows them to push their agenda, have more exposure, or generate more ad revenue with clicks if the recipient clicks on that article. And this happens because the publication intentionally makes sure that the headline has a high level of shock value to the point where the recipient has to spread misinformation. And lastly, there's something called echo chambers, and that involves everyone. It's where we go into our gated communities, such as who we watch on YouTube, where we want to hear what is called truth. This truth is similar to what you want to hear. It's specifically geared for you. It's just one type of subjective information and this is what makes us close-minded. We are too afraid to hear any other type of information, be, uh, which leads us to ignorance, instead of rationally exchanging information with other perspectives, while we try to get information to support our truth and our ideology. So let's take a look at the YouTube algorithm, for example. YouTube has made efforts over the years to make their platform easier to use, but in doing so for the algorithm, it will only curate videos that you will watch even if you didn't find your niche yet. So let's say um, you didn't find your niche yet or you only watch one type of content. Let's say makeup videos. You'll barely see any gaming or comedy videos. You'll only see more makeup videos on your recommended feed or suggestion feed. And because of this of flawed algorithm, this acts as a gateway to videos, even if labeled as makeup videos technically, it could be considered, these videos could be considered as anti-feminist, anti-LGBTQ, anti-vax, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this heavily restricts you into this echo chamber purely because YouTube's algorithm recommended it to you. And this happens as something constantly keeps track of what you consume on the internet to benefit the algorithm. So what can we do, especially as a younger generation and recipients, to make sure we're not influenced by misinformation? Well, one concept of this comes with critical thinking. And it's correctly and objectively evaluating whether that piece of information you found is accurate. 
So let's consider one method. It's asking the why questions. So let's think about some. Why is this an issue? What is the misinformer's intention of delivering this information? Why should I really post this on social media? What information am I lacking? This could go on forever. And even just asking one of these questions will allow you to evaluate a piece of information just better. But obviously, not everyone is going to fully investigate a piece of information or news. It's a demanding process in our busy or uneducated lives. So with that, it's better to identify where your understanding ends and be more curious about your information and actually getting it right, rather than sticking to your ideology and being, I'm right, you're wrong. And this will help you at least have an open mind. And when you're sharing any type of informa information, make sure you're accurate to what it actually is instead of overgeneralizing it or exaggerating it like we commonly see on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you're actually interested in a piece of information or drama or some news, fully investigate it. And this is because your interest should warrant you enough to actually go out there and research it. And once you actually start researching it, you can, you can make a decision on whether if that information is actually helpful for you, and if it's actually worth sharing, or it will just be another fad for a week on YouTube. So in summary, we need to actually start being responsible with how we handle information. Maybe we can't elim eliminate all of misinformation in the media, but we can at least try to mitigate it as the younger generation and as recipients. The information age is great because we're able to benefit greatly from information, but misinformation can still play a large role in negatively affecting our lives. So start being responsible with how we handle and receive information in media and on the internet. Otherwise, issues and old world diseases such as measles will return into society as a threat because of anti-vaccination movements caused by misinformation. Thank you for listening.